Hello everybody and welcome back to Lost Planeswalker. You are here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker, and today we're going to talk about all the spoilers from Magicon Amsterdam. This is a very quick video. I'm going to try and make it where we talk about new cards from Bloom Blurrow, Duskmorn, and Foundations and kind of talk about what to expect there. So we're going to dive right in and start looking straight into Bloom Blurrow. I'm going to try and streamline this process as much as possible to make it an enjoyable video. So first card is Lumara, Bellower of the Woods. No, this is not a new card. But we do see we're getting a cool treatment to it. I'm not sure exactly what they're calling this, but they're adding some really cool detail. Kind of reminds me of the neon ink. Maybe we'll see some variants of that. Might be something cool to see here. But yeah, Lumara here. Very cool card. Really cool frame. Next up, we have a cycle. The first cycle for this set, which are all the villages, which honestly, I could see this coming. But this is a set of cards, one of each color, that cares about all the different creature types of Bloomborough. Now, if you're not aware, Bloomborough is going to be a creature-based set. It's entirely anapomorphic, and it's going to be focused around two color creature pairs and that's what all of these lands show so we have okalo village rock face village mudflat village lily pad village and lupin flower village all of these do something a little differently they tap to add a colorless they each add a color respectively of their mana to cast creature spells specifically which i think is cool and then for a cost in tap the oak hollow village puts a plus one plus one counter on a frog rabbit raccoon or squirrel that entered the battlefield this turn so a very cool way to do that rock face village red in tap target lizard mouse otter or raccoon gets plus one plus zero and gains haste until at a turn activate only as a sorcery mudflat village is one in a black tap sack this return target bat lizard rat or squirrel from your graveyard to your hand honestly a pretty nice recursion piece that's also a land lily pad village blue and tap surveil to activate only if a bird frog otter or rat enters the battlefield under your control this turn pretty neat i love surveilling so that's great and then loop and flower village one in a white tap sack it look at the top six cards of your library you may reveal a bat bird mouse or rabbit card from among them put it into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order very cool cycle you know all of these are uncommon obviously these would be too good at common i guess but a lot of really fun things we can do with these so the next card i'm going to talk about here is salvation swan this is another unique art style and frame i don't think we've received so far and it's kind of mystical kind of reminds me honestly of the time spiral uh uh, frames or whatever that is can planar chaos that kind of looks like that it's kind of pretty neat in that way but it's a bird cleric there so it has flash flying and whenever salvation swan or another bird you control enters exile up to one target creature you control without flying return into the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it at the beginning of the next end step very cool way you can protect your pieces and give them flying for evasion or just give some things that need evasion evasion so a very cool effect i'm sure this is going to find play in some deck but the rest of the cards spoiled were very simple and i'm going to run through them very quickly here we have sun shower druid single green creature frog druid when it enters put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature and you gain one life personally i don't care about any of the other cards i love frogs and this frog is incredible and if we get more cards like this i'm gonna be so happy because this is this is all i want in magic look at this little guy he's a frog druid he's just look at him he's so cool so i am so 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 beyond excited for all of the frog support we're gonna get next up is might of the meek single red instant target creature gains trample until end of turn it also gets plus one plus zero until end of turn if you control a mouse and draw a card early winter is four and a black instant choose one exile target creature and then target opponent exiles an enchantment they control so two cool modes there very good in exiling creatures or getting rid of enchantments with black is really suffers at so i don't think this is gonna be a mainstream card but in limited it's gonna be pretty good then we have pearl of wisdom two in a blue sorcery this spell costs one less cast for each otter draw two cards hey i like paying one mana to draw two that's uh very good then there's carrot cake for one and a white artifact food when carrot cake enters and when you sacrifice it create a one one white rabbit creature token and scry one and then you can pay two tap sack it and you gain three life so essentially here for four mana you could make two bodies scry two and gain three life which is pretty neat it's definitely going to be nice i'm hoping we get some more food support that would be very cool to see in this set so that's all we have for bloom burrow i'm going to jump right into dustmorn but before we do so i just want to say if you aren't subscribed to my channel please consider doing so it would really mean the world to me so 
thank you, thank you, thank you. So Duskmorn House of Horrors is our last set of the year, standard legal, and it is so much cooler than I thought it was gonna be. We haven't really seen any pictures other than a few like full art images of what to expect from the set, but I am beyond excited. And I'm gonna start out just by looking at these basic lands and just going through them real quickly here. These are incredible. I know we got a secret layer or something a while back that looks like this, but these are just so beautiful and they're really hitting it out of the park with full lands, especially these. I can definitely see a ton of players really wanting to get their hands on a ton of these. So that is very, very cool. And I hope you like those as well. But next up, let's look at some other cool cards here with Doomsday Executioner, Screaming Nemesis, and Come Back Wrong. So Doomsday Executioner is six black pips, which is incredible. Creature Demon with Flying. And when it enters, if it was cast, each player exiles all but the bottom six cards of their library face down. And at the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card. So essentially, this is going to leave each player with only six cards in their library. Now you're going to be drawing them twice as fast with this on the board, which could be good or bad. Who knows? But if you play any sort of deck that revolves around cards like Doomsday, this is right in your ballpark. You know, it is kind of expensive and it has to be cast, but it's a pretty cool card. Screaming Nemesis is two and a red. Creature Spirit with Haste. When it is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any other target. If a player is dealt damage this way, they can't gain life for the rest of the game. Pretty interesting creature here. I mean, preventing somebody from gaining life for the rest of the game is not necessarily an effect we see all the time. So it's incredibly powerful. That's actually very cool. And then come back wrong, two in a black sorcery, destroy target creature. If a creature card is put into a graveyard this way, return it to the battlefield under your control, sack it at the beginning of the next end step. Pretty interesting effect. I'm not sure where this is gonna be, you know, best in. I'm sure there's some really good cases, maybe card draw, maybe some ETB effects. You know, I'm I'm not quite sure, but that's a that's a cool card. Cool kill spell for sure. So now I want to talk about some cards that are kind of over the top, honestly. These two here are both mythics. They're both super powerful. We have Overlord of the Hauntwoods, Enduring Tenacity. So Overlord of the Hauntwoods is three green green enchantment creature avatar horror with impending. And impending basically is time counters. It means it's an enchantment for as long as it's impending. And then when the time counters are removed, it's a creature. So very cool way that you can cast this at a discounted cost, get the effect on it, and just wait till it actually enters. But when an overlord of the haunt woods enters or attacks, create a tapped colorless land token named everywhere that is every basic land type. You know, honestly, I don't really know what you do with this card. Obviously, it goes in five color decks, being able to make lands that tap for every basic land type. But other than that, I'm not quite sure exactly where this falls in. But this is a very fun card, and I'm sure there's some very sick combos with it. Next, we have Enduring Tenacity, two black black enchantment creature, Snake Glimmer. And this is the first time we've seen Glimmer as a creature type, but I love it. Then we have, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Now there's only a couple cards in the game that have that effect, but they are very, very powerful. And then when Enduring Tenacity dies, if it was a creature, return to the battlefield under its owner's control, it's an enchantment. So this not only lasts through board wipes, effects anyways, you know, but you can just keep this on the battlefield unless they can remove the enchantment as well, meaning they have to kill the creature, then remove the enchantment. Boy, you're in a good place. That's a very, very cool effect, and I can't wait to see what other amazing effects we get from this Duskmorn set. Looking at some other cards here, we have Twitching Doll, Fear of Missing Out, and Nowhere to Run. So Twitching Doll, one in a green artifact creature, Spider Toy. Ooh. Tap it to add one mana of any color, put a nest counter on Twitching Doll, then two, sacrifice Twitching Doll, create a 2-2 green spider creature with reach for each counter on Twitching Doll, activate only as a sorcery. What a unique mana door. Get one mana of any color, put a nest counter on Twitching Doll, and then you can just get it as a payoff later on when you don't need this to make a board full of reaching spiders. That's a really cool effect. Only if you get maybe two or three creatures, I mean, that's enough to block some flying things that are maybe going to take you out of the game. So very, very cool. It does have the claws activate only as a sorcery. Obviously, somebody saw this was going to be too powerful otherwise, but pretty cool. Fear of missing out. One in a red enchantment creature nightmare. When fear of missing out enters the battlefield, discard a card, then draw a card. And then it has delirium, which I didn't expect to see, but makes sense. Whenever fear of missing out attacks for the first time each turn, if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, untap target creature. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Pretty cool extra combat creature 
Additionally, it's only one in a red. And uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, this is a creature I would... I'd let this die in order to take another combat for sure. So pretty neat. And then nowhere to run. One and a black enchantment. Flash when nowhere to run enters. Target creature and opponent controls gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. Then creatures your opponent's control can be targeted by spells and abilities as though they didn't have hexproof. And ward abilities on those creatures don't trigger. Very cool. It's been a long time coming that we've needed a card that kind of negates ward. And, you know, here we are. Hexproof as well is also pretty big getting rid of that you know there's not a place for that everywhere but there's certainly a lot of decks that have some really good hexproof creatures in them that you just want to get rid of so boy is that's pretty neat so next up i want to talk about our legendary planeswalker of this set which i didn't expect to see but boy is this art cool the wandering rescuer we have the wandering emperor here and she is here to save the day i guess but for three white white legendary creature human samurai noble we have flash and convoke and this has double strike and other tapped creatures you control have hexproof very cool because whatever creatures you use to help cast this with convoke they are instantly protected from hexproof now whether that is a kill spell that's coming your way and given that creature hexproof is going to keep it around or if you just want to get this out on turn before protect them that seems pretty good here the art on this is probably some of the most amazing art i've seen outside of secret lair exclusive art this is just incredible the one just is this awesome holographic with like death in the background and the second one looks like a vinyl record or something i mean i can tell these are going to be expensive but boy do i want each of them they're so so cool and i'm not done yet because we have more cards to cover we have toby beastie befriender chainsaw and cursed recording toby beastie befriender is two and a white ledger creature human wizard with when it enters create a four four white beast creature token with this creature can't attack or block alone and for as long as you control four or more creature tokens creature tokens you control have flying this is pretty big i mean honestly i don't know the exact spot this goes obviously a deck that you're creating a ton of creature tokens and you just can give them some evasion with flying i can see this being really good in aristocrats because you want to make a ton of tokens you can swing in then sack them so a lot of really cool advantages you can go with toby here but i think it's pretty powerful especially for only three mana then we have chainsaw one in red artifact equipment when chainsaw enters it deals three damage to up to one target creature it's kind of a pseudo lightning bolt there then when one or more creatures die put a rev counter on chainsaw so it does doesn't care about if it's your creature or not which is a really sweet effect and then a crypt creature gets plus x plus zero where x is the number of rev counters on chainsaw can you imagine getting this out early in a commander game and just how many rev counters it's gonna have you playing this in some gruel deck with lots of creatures with trample on it that's so good you know it costs the same as it would cost to equip like a sword of and i think it's definitely worth it you can get this power up really high including you know when it enters you kill a creature so pretty neat new artifact there then we have cursed recording two red red artifact whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell put a time counter on cursed recording then if there are seven or more time counters on it remove those counters and it deals 20 damage to you oh boy that is a lot but the payoff is you can tap this and whenever you next cast an instant sorcery spell copy that spell you may choose new targets for the copy so there's a big upside you being able to copy your spells but but if you accidentally cast or copy too many well you're gonna be dealing a ton of damage to yourself there might be ways for your opponents to proliferate these and uh just keep you from casting any spells after that so very neat card there that i think there's gonna be some very cool decks built around that and the last card from duskmorn is leyline of hope yes we're getting a new leyline cycle this is very exciting and boy is this one good in my opinion so leyline of hope two white white enchantment if leyline of hope is in your opening hand you may begin the game with it on the battlefield if you would gain life you gain that much life plus one instead and as long as you have at least seven or more life than your starting life total creatures you control get plus two plus two so one of my friends instantly pointed out to me well if you can turn zero put this onto the battlefield turn one play sarah ascendant which is a single white for a creature monk with lifelink as long as you have 30 more life sarah ascendant gets plus five plus 
plus five and has flying. This is a six, six. The first turn you attack with this, you will be gaining seven life because this gives you an additional life and it'll instantly get bigger because now you'll have seven or more life than your starting life total. What a powerful card. I can see this being a big threat. Imagine having multiple of these in hand, playing them the same turn, playing a Sarah Ascendant, gaining life and just just being incredible this is a very cool card this is a this is one of my favorite cycles of cards the ley lines so i can't wait to see what the other ones end up being and lastly but not least we have foundations which is a set i kind of had to look up because i didn't know anything about it foundations is going to be specifically cards that they're reintroducing back into standard think of it as a core set but they're kind of reintroducing this idea and i'm here for it i mean this is cool we get some of the coolest cards in magic from here specifically Terror of the Peaks was a 2020, I believe, core set card that is just incredibly powerful. And we have some really cool ones here. So the cards they decided to reprint into Foundations, bringing them back into Standard, is Omniscience, Day of Judgment, and Llanowar Elves. Now, all of these are pretty cool cards. I think Llanowar Elves and Omniscience are definitely more exciting than Day of Judgment is right here. But all of these are going to be legal and standard for a set period of time, so that's going to be pretty neat. And the two new cards I decided to show off for this is Nine Lives Familiar and Anthem of Champions. Nine Lives Familiar is one black black creature cat with this creature enters with eight revival counters on it if you cast it. When this creature dies, if it had a revival counter on it, return to the battlefield with one fewer revival counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. This is a aristocrat's dream. Now, of course, it is at the beginning of the next end step, meaning you can't just use all nine lives at once, but it does mean that over the course of four and a half turns, you can sacrifice this in aristocrat's deck and get aristocrat's triggers every turn, not just every time it's your turn, but during your turn and your opponent's turn. So that's pretty neat. I mean, this is a very good piece that I think a lot of aristocrat's decks are going to be loving. And then Anthem of Champions, a Selesnia or green and white enchantment creatures you control get plus one plus one a good anthem is a good anthem it's cheap it's powerful it counts creature tokens so i think uh anthem of champions is going to be very good but that is it i would just like to say thank you so much for watching this has been such a cool video i didn't know that this video or spoilers came out in amsterdam i hope that if you didn't know that either you enjoyed it please comment down below on what cards you're most excited about seeing or playing with now that i kind of have an idea of what duskmorn is going to be i am very excited to see even more of it bloomborough as well is just blowing me away like i said give me the frogs i love them so so much but if you would also please consider leaving a like subscribing and sharing this with a friend it would mean the world to me so thank you thank you thank you in today's scryfall card of the day is lore seekers stone mages come from far and wide to bathe in its wisdom thank you so much for watching and as always i'll see you later planeswalkers